Hello, I'm Andrew Dyer, and welcome to another edition of the Round Ball Report, the only show in the area dedicated to highlighting the exploits of the high school, college, and professional basketball teams which play in the Washington Metropolitan Area. And here with me again is my co-host, Nikki Lewis, formerly known as Coach Nikki Lewis. Now, Nikki, did you want to break news that you are officially going into retirement well, I, for this season well, anyway? I didn't plan to hold a press conference, but yeah, <laughs> I am following my communications field a little bit more this season. Oh, okay. And the next okay. season and the next season. Okay. I think she's holding out for a better offer, Coach <laughs> But we'll <laughs> I once a coach, always a coach, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just like Jimmy. Yes. <laughs> right, right. We're going to get things started today. It's talking about entering the communications field. We have the newest addition to the Round Ball Report family, Rachel McNair, graduate of George Mason University, and welcome. the one and only coach, Jimmy Flyhelm. And Rachel, welcome. And Jimmy, welcome back. Always a pleasure. Welcome, you. guys. Thank you so much. It's great now, Rachel, here. you are going to be focusing on the Washington Mystics for us. So talk about your early season uh, outlook for the Mystics. So they finished their preseason um, games one and one, um, but the hot topic for the Mystics was definitely Kalia Copper, the rookie. She was just dominant. She had 13 the first game against the Fever, and then she had 17 against the Minnesota Lynx. So when I talked to her on um, Mystics Media Day, she, men she mentioned just how she was adjusting to the pace of the game. Mm -hmm. And starting out strong, we see that she's adjusted quick. Right. And Jimmy, I had a chance to actually do the uh, preseason game against Indiana along with our long-term round ball report co-host Christian Winter Scott, the voice of the Mystics. And Kalia Copper is definitely a keeper. I've watched Rutgers several times. I don't recall, remember seeing her during the regular season, but Coach Tebow is a general manager and a coach, and I think he got a steal in this draft pick. Now, help me out here. Is she a point guard? She guard? is a 2-3. Two, 2-3, three. Two, two, three. Two, three. so she can handle the rock. Because Ivory Ladd is going to be out for four to six weeks, right? Well, actually, Natasha Cloud is serving as the point, as guard. point guard. Yes, yeah. second season. Well, you know, he's been slowly building, getting the pieces that he wants in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's just another bonus for them starting off the season. I, I think they need to get off to a good start with the season starting on Saturday uh, so that they can uh, fulfill their dream of getting to the NBA, WNBA championship. Now, Rachel, uh, in addition to, uh, in addition to <laughs> Kalia Cooper, Kalia Side Copper, <laughs> I almost made that mistake of calling her Cooper, but it's Cynthia Kalia. <laughs> Kalia Copper. Kalia Copper. Kalia Copper. Well, I know, I know, I know. Right. Kalia <laughs> Copper out of Rutgers. Um, they've got Zoe Dim Dim Dimitraku. Um, who came from overseas. She looks like she's going to be a, a, a impact player. They're getting uh, Tiana Hawkins back from maternity leave. Mm -hmm. Taylor Hill is her second year back from maternity leave. And she had 18 points in the second preseason game. She didn't play in the first one. So they've got a lot of wings scoring. The key is going to be, is Natasha Cloud and, uh, ready to take the helm of point guard on a consistent basis? Yeah, and that's going to be very important, especially since Lotta's out right now. So just having that stability around the arc is important. And like you said before, Hill was out, and she was leading the game with 18 points against the Lynx. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I had also talked to Stephanie Dawson about the post presence as well and how mm -hmm. important that's going to be as, wa as well as um, keeping the stability around the arc. Right, and Rachel is a former play post player. You know how dependent the post <laughs> players are on the point guard, so it's really going to be even more imperative with um, Kia Vaughn back at the beginning of the season and Stephanie Dolson and Tiana Hawkins that they get strong point guard play from Natasha Cloud. Yeah, I, it's just very important to work the ball from the inside out because us post players, <laughs> we get it done. <laughs> we get it done. Inside out because you're a former post player. Yep. So do you think once the Ivory Lada is back in the rotation that things will still run smoothly with the team and Natasha jumping back to the two position? Like she had a really great rookie season. Do you think it's going to be a lot of pressure on her this year, taking the, over the helm from Ivory? Well, when I talked to her, um, she was mentioning how she's just took up the leadership role and just being more vocal, mm -hmm. especially with Ivory out right now. But I don't think it'll be a problem. You know, she was leading also in assists mm -hmm. on the team. So I think adding Ivory, it'll just mold the pieces all together for I this agree. team. Now, one key player that's going to help with that point guard mitts is Bria Hartley. What's, what's her situation? She, she's not back from overseas yet? You, well, she actually was back 
from overseas. I saw her on the bench. She wasn't playing. She hasn't okay. played yet. Yeah, so I'm not sure. It must be some kind of her. injury related. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wish we could get our inside <laughs> inside the scoop man. Ed. Yes. <laughs> Tell us what's going on with Bria. <laughs> He's saying something. I can't hear him. <laughs> He's saying wait for the cuts. <laughs> no, Bria Hartley's not getting no, cut. No, way. no. She was a very uh, integral part of that team last year, and I think she's she's going to jump right in, right back into the flow of it all. And, Jimmy, we had a chance to talk to Coach Tebow in the uh, hallway after the game on Friday, and he was talking, and Christy and I talked about it during the broadcast. They had uh, a point guard that really is transitioning from point guard at Washington State. He had already shown this, and Chasha Cloud had showed well, but they were going up against Indiana, and they are a team that pressures the ball, and she had a lot of turnovers. He was saying, well, she had that's that's gonna if she's gonna play in this league she's gonna have to play point guard and it's a young lady I forget what was the number uh, I forget her name but uh, but she's from overseas the point guard that we're talking about but anyway I don't know about whether or not she's gonna make the final roster because of the fact that she doesn't look like she's ready to transition and be ready to play a point well that's why it's important to have your two and three swing players be able to handle the basketball because they can come back into the backcourt help relieve some of that pressure especially taking traps some of these smaller guards, because in the women's game, you got, you know, Ivory Ladder, she's listed at 5'5". Five, five. I've stood next to her. <laughs> she's not that tall. But sometimes they have difficulty seeing her with traps. So mm -hmm. you use a bigger person to relieve the pressure and then get it to the smaller guard to make the play. So I think he'll figure it out. He's a smart guy. And I think now that they, they got a lot more depth. Mm -hmm. they, have a, they had a good, solid five, six-person rotation. To add more depth, more athleticism, I think that'll bode well for them going into the so season. So th do you think they have a great chance of, of making it all the way through to the finals this year? Uh, let me go to the game Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> You'll let us know. <laughs> <Do> not <laughs> test. Yeah, that's right. He's got to see him himself first. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to see him. So, what's your prospect for the team when everybody's health? Because health is going to be a key. I think they got to get Ivy back. They've got to find out what the story is with Bria Hartley because I think they're they're healthy in the front court for 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 the first time in a while. And they've got to get Emma Meeseman back. They're only all star from last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think that right now Copper mm -hmm. uh, just stepping up right now. I think she's done a really good job of filling the void mm -hmm. of Ivory being out right now and. I think that helps because I was asking Coach before, offensively, how are you guys going to get into a rhythm? And she scored the first two points for the Mystics in their first game um, mm -hmm. against the Indiana Fever. Mm -hmm. So having that, but also with Misa ben and Dolson in the paint, they were both all-stars last year. That's going to really help them as well because, I mean, they were dominating last year. So I think that will help. And then getting Ivory back on the court, leadership, that will definitely help, and with her scoring, because she was the leading scorer last season for this team. And if she's a veteran, I think, mm -hmm. I don't know, how do you feel about her being a veteran on the team as well, coming back? Do you think they're going to listen? You know, her, she has great leadership skills at, as well, and she kind of guided Natasha last year. Mm -hmm. So I think with her coming back and easing her way back into that starting lineup, it's going to be even easier for everyone else. Well, I also saw that um, she was talking about how, like, she's been using her voice in practice, mm -hmm. in camp, and so they hear her. And mm -hmm. even at the game on um, Friday, their first preseason game, you could hear her on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> she was yelling, come on, stop, stop, stop her right there. So it's like she's still heard, and that's very important. And she was just saying how even though she's not on the court, it's very important for her voice to still be heard. All right, well, that does it for our WNBA focus for this week. And you can always catch the most comprehensive coverage of the WNBA in the local area right here on the Round Park Report. Plowed to have Rachel with us.